name as Mr. Ladies Man, <laughs> or some of you may know me as Mr. Treasurer. Big money. That all may be true, but tonight I'm here to tell you guys about a different aspect of my life. Tonight, I want to tell you guys about my wonderful brother, Carl. He was diagnosed with cerebral palsy and epilepsy at a very young age. I remember growing up, his seizures weren't under control and someone had to watch him constantly. I remember my parents took him all around India. They tried non-traditional and traditional medicine, but nothing seemed to help. At last, we had one hope remaining. It's been almost 12 years since my family decided to move across the world and start a new life here in Ohio, or in the U.S. The decision wasn't easy, heavily influenced by my brother's health. I had to leave my friends and family behind, but my parents made a greater sacrifice. They went from being independent to totally dependent on my uncle and his family. I enrolled in 8th grade when I started, and I spent the majority of my first year in ESOL program, which is English for speakers of other languages. Where I was fortunate enough to not only learn English, but also the cultural norms along the way. Unfortunately, my parents didn't have a single opportunity, as their priority was my brother's health and providing for the family. Looking back at it, it was probably one of the best decisions my family made. My parents love it here now. They've been back to India a couple of times since, and they tell me, you can't even pay me to move back to India anymore. <laughs> Personally, I don't think I would have chosen the same path of becoming a doctor if I was still back in India. I don't even know if I would have been the same person if it wasn't for the life lessons that I learned along the way since moving here. The decision to move to U.S. had seemed to be working out for the first time. And my, as my brother's seizures were finally under control, thanks to my cousin, who helped establish care for him at the Children's Hospital in D.C., I was finally getting accustomed to the East Coast life and making new friends. And my dad had just got a job. Right when it seemed like things were working out fine, some unforeseen circumstances with my family brought us to Cincinnati, Ohio. Yet again, I had to leave my friends and family behind and start a new life in Cincinnati, and that wasn't easy. This time, it was a totally different ball game. I was in charge. I was the captain now. <laughs> we did have an uncle to help support my family, or a cousin to help care for my brother. My parents couldn't get by with their broken English. No one in my family had a license or a car. During that time, I felt the weight of my family on my shoulder at age 17. I had to take up the responsibility to reestablish my brother's care and enroll him in a school. I had to take my mom to the grocery store and help write checks for her bills. I helped my dad um, run his banking for a small business and work for him after school. During this time, it was a hectic time for our family, and tension was rising within our family. As my dad thought he wasn't providing enough for the family, and my mom couldn't help because she had to look after my brother. I thought there were enough hours in the day for me to go to school do my homework, work for my dad, and be able to attend to my brother's medical needs. Growing up, I feel like I skipped out on my adolescent life, adolescent life as I couldn't attend high school dances or go to bonfires with my friends. I feel like I always had to put my family first, even when it came to choosing an undergraduate institution and having to live at home. There have been times when things have gotten difficult and when I doubted myself. I remember during my sophomore year of undergrad, 
one night, my brother had continued seizures and had to take him to the ER. I was really overwhelmed doing the EMS ride and getting to see him hooked up to the IVs and monitors when we got there. The next morning, I had an organic chemistry exam and I failed. That's when I contemplated what the future holds for me. How will he impact my future? Will I still be able to pursue my dreams of becoming a doctor and still be a good brother and take care of him? Fast forward to today, here we are in Athens. It's been almost two years since I've been away from my family. I still take care of the majority of my brother's medical health as I'm also his legal guardian now. I try to schedule his appointments while I'm back home or around my class time so I can be conferenced in on phone calls. My parents, they still send me pictures of males if they don't know what the letter is trying to say. I try to keep my phone on volume as much as possible, just in case if something happens to my brother and my mom calls, and I'm, I'm afraid I don't want to miss that call. But the past couple of years have been a positive le learning experience for my parents as they are learning to be independent and they have the peace of mind knowing that I'm, a, I'm only a phone call away if they need me. So next time, when you see a money man or a ladies man, <laughs> just remember that they have a story. It might not be as moving or as emotional as yours, but everyone has a story. So as we are resilient and determined to be the best person we can be, Let's also be determined to get to know the person next to you a bit better. Thank you.